Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are tackling the critical subject of cranial cruciate ligament disease. This condition can seriously impact your pet's mobility and their quality of life. So join me to learn what this disease is and the best treatment options. The cranial cruciate ligament is one of the most important stabilizers within the stifle or the knee of your cat or your dog. In humans, the cranial cruciate ligament is known as the ACL. The cruciate ligaments actually form an X within the joint in order to help stabilize that stifle. This allows the stifle to move back and forth like a hinge, but it helps to restrict any side to side motion. The other important thing to know about is that in the stifle, we have a meniscus and it forms a bit of a cushion for when the femur is weight bearing onto the tibia. It also helps with position sensing and it can be damaged if the cranial cruciate ligament is damaged. Rupture of the cranial cruciate ligament is one of the most common causes for hind limb weakness, pain, and subsequent arthritis developing in the knee. Cranial cruciate ligament disease is caused by a number of different factors. The ligament tends to degenerate as the animal ages. Obesity, poor physical condition, genetics, conformation is also a big player here. There are also some breeds that have an increased risk for cruciate ligament disease. It's also a known correlation that dogs that have patella luxation are more likely to develop cruciate ligament problems later. With cranial cruciate ligament disease, the process that leads to rupture is a slow and chronic one in most cases. It is pretty rare for there to be an acute trauma to a healthy cruciate ligament causing it to rupture. Whereas in people, that is a very common reason for them to have cruciate ligament problems. But in our dogs, it tends to be a chronic degeneration over time and they might rupture a part of it but still have part of the ligament left and then a little while later they'll injure some more and tear some more of that ligament and so you'll tend to see where they'll get a little bit more painful and then a little less painful and then they'll rupture a bit more and become more painful again until finally the ligament fully is torn and then they just are in significant pain all the time. Because this is a complex disease process that is so impacted by the conformation and genetics of the animal. 40 to 60% of dogs that have a cruciate ligament rupture in one knee will have that same thing occur to the other side at some point. Partial tears are pretty common in dogs and almost always will lead to a full tear over time. Without an intact, healthy cruciate ligament, the stifle is unstable. What this leads to is abnormal wear between the bones and with the meniscus in that stifle. This leads to degenerative changes within that joint, bone spurs, arthritis, and more pain will develop if it's not addressed. Now the process of arthritis development will be slowed by surgery that stabilizes the joint, but we cannot reverse it once it's present. In some patients, we can see the beginning arthritic changes called osteophytes in as little as one to three weeks. It happens pretty quick. Cranial cruciate ligament disease can and does impact dogs of all sizes, but it's a lot less common in our cats. There are a number of different symptoms that you might see if your dog is dealing with cruciate ligament issues. They might have problems rising out of a sit, or they might even have trouble getting themselves into a sit. They'll have issues with jumping up, think going up into a car or going upstairs. We usually see some amount of limping. Some dogs will try to be more stoic and limp a little less than others. Some dogs will be so lame that they are non-weight bearing completely. They will also often appear stiff. Dogs that are in pain often do not vocalize, whine, cry, or anything like that, but they still are experiencing significant pain. Next, let's cover how we diagnose cranial cruciate ligament disease. A complete tear is usually pretty easy to diagnose. We use a combination of a gait exam, a physical exam, a sedated orthopedic exam, and sedated x-rays. Partial tears can be a lot more challenging to diagnose. Let's dive into our treatment options. Truly for all sizes of dogs, the sooner surgical stabilization of the stifle can be done, 
the better. A tibial plateau leveling osteotomy or TPLO is currently the gold standard treatment. What happens is a semicircular cut is made in the tibia and the top of the tibia is rotated so that instead of being at more of an angle, it is brought down to an angle of two to three degrees. This means that when the femur bears weight down onto the tibia, it now has a stable, fairly flat surface to land on instead of an angled one, which means that the knee becomes biomechanically stable again. Now, because the bone has been cut, we do need to put a plate onto the bone so that the bone can heal in the new orientation. There was one research study that showed 93% of TPLO patients returned to full function within a year. That's amazing. That's an incredible outcome. The risk of complications is quite low, especially when the procedure is done by a veterinary orthopedic surgeon. TPLO patients return to function faster, they tend to do better over the long term, and their arthritis is slowed down. Now there used to be more commonly another procedure called a TTA, and in this situation a linear cut along the front of the tibia is done, and then it is advanced forward until it's about 90 degrees from the quadriceps. As this procedure isn't as successful as the TPLO, I'm not going to spend a lot of time covering it. The last treatment option that I'm going to touch on is one where we do not actually cut into the bone. There are a few different techniques. They fall under the umbrella of extra capsular suture stabilization. The general goal is to be putting in a type of strong, almost like a fishing line, to put it in the same orientation across the joint as the cruciate ligament would have followed within the joint. The long-term goal is to stabilize the joint for long Long enough that scar tissue can form around the outside of the joint. There are a number of common complications that occur after an extra capsular repair is attempted. Most often the suture that is used will stretch or break and there isn't enough stabilization of that stifle anymore. We also tend to see the arthritis progression in the joint continue. For dogs that are over roughly 30 pounds, this really isn't even an option. But if you have the rare cat or a very small dog, it might be something to consider. Even if one of my small pets had a cruciate ligament rupture, I would still pursue a TPLO because the return to function is better, the long-term outcome is better. However, an extra capsular repair is often less expensive. And so there are some situations where I've performed them for small patients of mine because that was the only option. When surveyed in research studies, clients who chose extra capsular repairs for their dogs were less satisfied with the outcome and with the procedure than those who had pursued the TPLO. If and when at all possible, go for a TPLO. Occasionally, I will hear people talk about medical management for these patients. Pain medication can be used to improve the comfort of the animal, but they will still be experiencing significant pain because that stifle is still unstable. You also are required to do very strict exercise restriction in an attempt to give the knee a chance to develop the scar tissue, but that doesn't happen for a lot of patients and over time they will tend to get muscle loss which will worsen their pain as well. They'll also tend to get meniscal injuries. They experience a lot of pain in the process and the knee just develops really awful arthritis that you cannot reverse once it's there. Occasionally I will also get the question about using a knee brace. This is because for bipeds, humans, there has been some success using knee braces for cruciate ligament injuries. However, the mechanics of how the dog stifle works very different than how the human knee works. And for that reason, braces are not recommended for dogs. Additionally, to get a good quality knee brace that's custom fitted will be almost as expensive as a TPLO surgery. And in the patients that have tried them, there tends to be a lot of intolerance that the dog will have. They just don't want to wear the brace. They'll tend to get bandage sores, rubbing sores. In no way are braces are an alternative to surgery. Seeing a veterinary rehab specialist is also very important. This will improve function after surgery and will get your dog back to their normal function faster. However, rehab is not a substitute for surgery. We need to use the two together. So after surgery, your surgeon 
will discuss with you very strict return to activity plans. If your animal does too much activity too soon, it dramatically worsens the outcomes and increases the risks of complications. You might have bones that don't heal as well or implants that end up failing. Guided return to activity between the surgeon and the rehabilitation will give your animal the best chances possible. The long-term prognosis for animals that promptly receive a surgical stabilization of their stifle after a cruciate rupture is great. Arthritis is likely going to progress no matter what treatment is done. However, TPLO gives you the best chance of the slowest arthritis progression. I do have a previous three-part series on the multimodal management of arthritis. I'll make sure to link them in the description because that will be important as your dog continues to age. As you know, here on BMC, I am all about prevention. So what can we do to minimize the risks of a cranial cruciate ligament rupture? Making sure that we're supporting ethical and excellent breeders whose animals do not have a history of cruciate ligament disease. We also need to be working on fitness, with our animals because we do not want them to be in poor physical condition. We also need to keep them a lean body condition score of four to five out of nine. We're feeding them a research-based diet that meets WSAVA guidelines. The other factors that contribute to cruciate ligament disease aren't so much in our control. So do what you can. If you have any questions or a topic that you'd like me to cover in the future, this one was requested a while ago, <laughs> please let me know in the comments. I love to hear from you. I do put out a new video most Fridays and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Bye!